comic books, those piles of well-thumbed, repetitiously red-colored strips that we used to scorn, that we feared would dull our children's minds or turn them to a life of crime. Well, those comics have now become the sophisticated, nostalgic interest of today's college students. Cosmicon 3, the annual conference of comic book lovers, met recently at York University. Already a firm tradition in its third year, Cosmicon draws dealers, writers, and artists from all over America. They display their drawings, reminisce about the greats, and compare collections. At endless counters, heaped high with comic memorabilia, the fans sift through in search of treasure. What are they like, those comic book fans? Well, they're very intense about what they like because it's a popular medium, and being a popular medium, it's usually relegated to say trash it's not respected as an art form or anything like that and comic fans see it as something else they see it as an art form they see it as something not in north america what it's relegated to but what it could be it could be a very strong art form and the stuff at this the things that are shown at this convention you can see what can be done with it well do they identify as members of the counterculture uh... well they find that something that they share that is unique that the rest of society shuns so that brings them closer together as a subculture the old comic book, originally purchased for 10 cents, is now wrapped carefully in cellophane and displayed like an old masterpiece. This here is Walt Disney, Comics and Stories number one. And like, this is the first Donald Duck. This is the most valuable comic on the Disney market, Disney collectors. This one would go for about $1,000 as well. This is a near mint copy of the first Batman issue. And this also is valued at roughly $1,000. Now this is the king of all of them. This is action number one, the first appearance of Superman. It came out in June 1938 that orig originally sold for 10 cents. Now it goes for $3,500. I've been offered this price by two separate collectors. And like the book in 1964 was selling for $40. So it's multiplied in value like 100 times in the last 10 years. All the clichés of the comic book world are still there. There is horror, the endless daring do of swords and sorcery, war comics fought against foes from every continent, superheroes repeatedly saving the world, occasional humor, and coy romance. Well, you look at any or most of the drawings, and they always portray the women as a very limp-wristed kind of, you know, help, help, you know, superhero, save me. And the superhero that is doing this is always a man, and the man is always portrayed as the big, you know, bronze, you know, triangle, broad shoulders and, and thin waist and everything. And then... Um, you look at Wonder Woman, Supergirl, and, you know, when they're not out saving the world, they're very worried about their boyfriends, you know, if I've got a boyfriend. And, and when little girls read that, or, or even little boys, they, you know, they all of a sudden get the idea that, you know, this is important, this is, you know, this is a necessity, you have to be pretty, you have to have a man, you know, which is a very wrong, uh, wrong idea. There are also new themes, such as sexploitation and underground comics that are disturbing to some. Comics today capture sensationalism such as drug stories, etc., which win popular approval because they are things which 10 or 15 years ago were taboo. Uh, but in no way do comics today have the characterization that they did in the 1930s or 1940s for that matter. They're the ones that, that we've all lived as young people. We've all had the experiences that, say, the Freak Brothers had. And we know them, and that's the kind of the comics I like. What, what's happening with the Freak Brothers? Well, they're just a bunch of freaked out friends who live together and smoke a lot of dope and just have a good time hanging around, doing nothing. <laughs> One young critic holds that comics are reaching new heights in the graphic arts. These are a series of panels that are not related by words. So you have to link them together in your mind and you have to put the time frame sequence together in your mind so that some of these panels may happen in instant, some may take hours and some may seem to stretch for eons, which is what these strip panels are supposed to portray, the, the time sequence, the sheer rending of the universe, and a very epic-like story, which goes right back to the beginnings of storytelling, man versus God, man becoming God, 
um, man finding the universe. Though comics may be succeeding as an art form, they still deliver all the familiar crunch, splat, and kazam. Agony is still open-mouthed, heroes still over-muscled, and evil still evident. A new generation is coming onto the scene, a generation that has learned early the value of its literature. What have you got there? Well, this is Superboy number one, and that's Tarzan number one. I picked them up in Owen Sound at, um, oh, at a book barn for 10 cents, and I got this one on a different day that's 25, because they put them on different shelves. What are they worth now? Oh, Superboy number one's only worth se in between $75 and 100 and this one's worth about 12 to $15. What are you going to do with them? Keep them. You're not going to sell them? No. Going to keep them forever? Yep, as long as I live. <laughs>